Yo, what's going on internet? Today I really want to introduce a new material that I learned about, you know, I'd say about two years ago when working on my last show, and that is sign foam or HDU foam. It's basically something I use to sort of make this, you know, guitar right here. So yes, this guitar is actually made out of foam. And one of the weird things is that when people hear the word foam, they think cheap, they think, flimsy or sort of delicate and that is not the truth because there's so many different types of foam that you're able to sort of find this type of foam called sign foam and actually use it for actual sort of application in your practice that are really really just cool and i just wanted to share it because i ran across the material from my friend ryan who was helping me uh, sort of model or build my instruments for my last show so we made basically these little mini charrettes and I thought they were made out of balsa wood when I picked them up and they were actually made out of salt. And he told me about this product and it, that's when sort of everything changed and now, you know, a lot of the things that I build that are 3D are going to be made out of that type of foam. So I basically shaped a lot of my last show from that material. So it is super fun, like I said, like this right here is made all out of foam. So one of the first things to learn is that it's a closed cell sort of foam. And the difference between closed cell and open cell that I've been learning is that closed cell doesn't allow things like moisture or water to get in, air to get in, so prevents it from warping. Unlike wood, you can keep wood outside, but it's gonna warp, it's gonna change with the weather and temperature. But with this type of foam, it's sort of like all weather. So you can keep it out in cold temperatures, warm temperatures, hot temperatures, and it's not going to warp. So it's something that sort of stays the same over the course of sort of like the entire sort of change in the climate over the course of the year. So that's why I really, really like it. They also come in different weights. So 15 pound and 18 pound, whether it's sort of uh, the 15 pound one or the 18 pound one, this is 15 pound right here, is that it's easily able to be sort of used on like a CNC machine, table saw, chop saw, hand saw, drills, dremel. Think of it as sort of easy wood to work with. And I like it because it's sort of really structural, sort of like, you can kind of see like it's not going to sort of bend as much as you know you would think. Uh, it sort of keeps its sort of structural integrity. Easily able to be sort of like cut and carved into. You can kind of see if you want to sort of like whittle it down. So think about if you're using this with a Dremel or using this with a power sander, you're able to easily sand it down. With any sort of wood carving sort of tools, they come in sort of the eight by four uh, feet slabs. So they're really expensive though. When I was getting my sheets, and it just depends on the pound size and how thick you're getting it. Um, the sheets I was getting that were four by eight were around I'd say 350, 400, uh, but like this material right here, you have to go to one of those specialty shops like a sign shop or sort of online. Uh, it does come in different thicknesses like half an inch to as thick as 24 inches. Um, a lot of them some, sometimes come smaller, but a lot of them are in the four by eight slabs. So I have to sort of like figure out what I want to do with all that material. Uh, so I buy a slab whenever I have like a big project that I want to do. What you can also do is sort of glue it together because you can stack these on top of each other and just keep gluing it, gluing it, gluing it to get something that's really thick. So you don't have to get the thickest uh, option as well. And the glue to use on these HDU pieces is the foam glue. If you're using wood glue, the wood glue will dry sort of harder than this actual material. So that's not something that you want to do because as you're sanding it down, you're carving into it, there's gonna be these layers that are sort of harder than the actual foam. And it just looks weird and just cuts where the foam glue is what you want to sort of use whenever you're sort of gluing these things together and stacking them on top of each other. But once you sort of glue them together, it's sort of like that's one piece. It's not gonna feel like a separate piece with that foam glue. Another thing that I really liked about this foam right here is that it's easily able to be sort of painted uh, without even having to sort of prime it. So I was able to just like throw paint on here, throw, you know, aerosol paint, spray paint, whatever on this material right here. And it just stuck because it's sort of like, you don't have to prime anything about it. Just sand it down. Um, if you want to sort of coat it, you can coat it as well. So I've done a ton of projects where it's kind of like, I want this to have like a hard shell on it uh, to sort of give it more protection. So you're able to actually, like I said, 
add paint to it really easy without primer and you're able to coat it with an epoxy to sort of give it like a hard shell. So a lot of my last show, the five corners, I did a ton of sort of instruments that were sort of made out of this type of foam right here. And basically I did like a futuristic sort of guitar that I showed you, uh, turntables, drums. Well, another thing that I did was I actually made sort of like this gas tank to this electric motorcycle that I had. The electric motorcycle didn't need sort of like a gas tank sort of shell, but I wanted that look. So I actually used the sign film to actually build one. And as you can see right here, this is that sort of uh, shell that I was talking about. If you look underneath, you can see the different layers. I just kept layering it and layering it and layering it. And then I sort of sanded it down the top of it and the outside to be that shape. And then I sort of used this epoxy coating on top of it to give it that sort of glossy sort of hard shell. And that was really fun because I was able to sort of just take sheets of this sort of uh, foam that's hard, glue it together and easily create sort of like the shell within the span of one day. It's one of those materials that I've been sort of talking to a lot of artists about, mainly because I think it's really great to sort of have this material that you can sort of use to sort of build your sort of uh, instruments, your sort of sculptures, your sort of, you know, 3D objects that you really want to. You can make sort of creative scenes uh, with diorama. You can do a ton of different things with this sort of uh, type of foam, prototyping, anything and everything, different sort of sculpture that you want to do. And you're easily able to do it uh, without having to sort of get into sort of the different types of wood or different types of just other materials, um, paper mache, things like that. So you're able to use uh, this material and just create whatever you want to. So I wanted to sort of share that material sort of uh, secret with you all. For me, it's like I didn't know about it until two years ago when I had to sort of stumble upon it um, through another project that I was doing from someone else and basically found out about it and it has changed the way I sort of look at sort of creating uh, different items in my practice or sculptures or whatever and just like being able to expand exactly my ideas that what I want to do because now it's like I don't have to use wood I don't have to use metal I can just use the sign foam easy to work with easy to cut I can put on the CNC machine I can cut it with my hand I can cut it with you know a little whittle or a dremel and just create what I want to create so that's why I wanted to share that today with you all so hopefully um, you'll be able to sort of uh, get some of your own like I said you can get the big slab I think they have uh, smaller ones on eBay or Amazon or some of these sort of smaller websites. Like I said, it's expensive, but I think it's worth sort of getting a piece of it and just trying it out and seeing how you like it and how you can incorporate it into your practice because, you know, you just got to get your hands on it, to just feel it and just do stuff with it to sort of figure out, okay, this is what I can do in my studio practice. So hopefully you like the video, like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so YouTube does not torture me and beat me over the head with the algorithm. It will help me out a lot. Comment below on other videos you may want to see, and I will see you next time. Peace.